tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hi folks, what you see here is nothing really special, but it looks quite nice. And uh, you have to find out yourself where it may lead to. It is not Maya MASH, M-A-S-H, that is. MASH deals with lots of instances of a single structure, so they, this could easily be MASH. No, it's a dynamic system called Bifrost graph. And the Bifrost graph is very complex. It's basically a programming, a visual programming language. But I show you today how to create these so called strands. And the strands are animated, which you can see here. And it's very simple because the strands are not animated. It is this basic structure which is behind the strands, which are unhide now, which is a helix. And the helix is animated and the strands just follow. And as you can see, they stick out from the normals of that polygon helix. When you create something in Bifrost Graph, you need to think logically. And the logic tells you, first of all, you need something to start with. And that's a geometry, for example, a helix or a torus or whatever or or a human creature once you've started with that object you need to create a strand module for that and feed it into that strand model so Maya knows that we want to create strands from that geometry so that's the second basic module and the third one if you want more control over rendering you need to tell the strands to use arnold as a renderer and feed it with a ai standard surface shader or a material like a tune material so to have more control over it so let me start a new scene and i'm going to create from windows general editors content browser a human from the standard library. It doesn't cost anything. It's built into Maya. Now, the dimensions are very important for um, Bifrost Graph because it's a, basically a dynamic system, although we won't do dynamics today. Uh, but um, in this case, I will just scale him down so he's like a miniature figure in a children's room. This is a centimeter here and uh, not a meter. Okay, uh, I want to reduce him because he's too complex for what I'm going to do. And for that reason, I go to Mesh and I remesh him. And uh, he's uh, pretty crude now, but uh, this is basically still the same structure. I can change the parameters here to 10, for example. And then he looks a little bit more human. From now on, I'll jump into the Bifrost Graph world. And you activate it by going to Windows and open the Bifrost Graph Editor. If you don't find the Bifrost Graph Editor, go to Settings Preferences. It's the same menu, Windows. And open the Plugin Manager and type in Bifrost. You need to activate that module here. But I have activated it already. And... I get this opening window here and I just create a graph. That's a default. The graph starts with an input and an output and we just delete the input because the input and we move it over to the side a little bit. The input is going to be my Sean post character. He has no animation coming with it. He's just standing there straight. He doesn't have even a skeleton, just nothing. Now, um, when I feed this output here into the output entry, it doesn't do anything. It won't produce an error message because I'm just displaying the character as it is. But uh, I want to create strands and uh, this is how you go about it. In the empty space here in the Bifrost Graph Editor, you just uh, tap the 
tab key actually <laughs> and um, here you see the recent commands the commands I used in the last hour or so um, don't get irritated by this this is all the options you have in uh, concerning the nodes you can create here and uh, what we want to use is the search function and in the search search function we uh, type in strands and now we get a selection of what we can create and one is construct strands construct strands creates strands but from what from point low position now when you connect the mesh to the point position you get an error message you see it gets this uh, orange kind of color and a big warning down there so this does not work and it's very easy to see that it doesn't work we don't have the same colors here we don't have the same colors here either because this is a port which can be opened and um, it accepts many things but uh, this one's something in green and um, the reason for that th that it does not work is that this feeds in geometry and this accepts point positions that is uh, po points in space and there is a module and you need to know this in order to use it and that, that's called point position get point position so tap key get point position it's down here so this module as you can see gets the point positions from that geometry so it wants in the geometry input it wants geometry this is our geometry we feed it into the get point position this module does nothing but creating a huge number of three-dimensional vectors basically of the point the positions of the points in space for example of that point the sh shoulder point that point all the points which uh, construct that object and now you see green to green very easy and once I connect this the strands to the output I see strands appearing here I minimize that window because I want to use it again now the strands are static and um, when you hide your character you see the strands here and if you change the complexity of the character you can have uh, more strands or less strands and you can animate them using an MPM system and I did a tutorial about this but I don't want to animate the strands today so this is one version to create strands it basically tries to connect the points in space of our geometry let us uh, unhide him so we have the strands right here and maximize the options here and have a look at the options uh, construct strands has parameters nothing really to do it just constructs the strands from where it gets the strands from in the info you see the point position strand offset a little bit of um, documentation actually it looks like much but it doesn't help very much uh, and here are the parameters we need to stick to the parameters get point position has nothing really to do here and um, it's the same here so we cannot really do anything for example the length of the connections here we cannot change them the length because it is a fixed length it goes from one point to another of course we can control from what point to another it should go but uh, we need other nodes in order to get this crude point position uh, clarified and changed and refined to go to into that construct strands node let me delete these two because now and this one because now we're going to create strands of a different kind you see he is back to normal now tap and we type in strands and now we create the strands from the normals it's the second entry here create strands along the normals and uh, once you do, do this nothing happens here of course because we haven't connected anything yet but we're going to do this now uh, and as you can see this create strands along normals doesn't need anything about the point positions it has a blue input of G 
geometry. So you just feed that geometry in here. So in a way it's simpler, but it does a totally different thing. And the strands go out here and you create the strands here. And now they look quite different because they stick out as normals from our object. And um, when you click here on create strands along normals and check the parameters here, you can see how many segments you want to have, six in this case. So each of these lines has six parts basically. That's important when you animate it. And you have a length of one. If you reduce that length to 0, 0 0.5, before I press enter, you see that it's uh, much shorter. By the way, it uh, because I pressed enter, it opened that create strands long normals node, which is basically the machinery behind that node here. So there's a lot of things, there are a lot of things happening when you use this um, node here. And you see that by double clicking and um, here you can go back. It's the same with all the other parts. What I did in my tutorial in my intro video was just animate the structure here. And uh, I can do this easily. Um, Control A brings me the attribute editor. And I animate the rotation in Y, that's the vertical axis, by typing in an equation equals frame. Now we have our man rotating. And when I hide him, I see the rotating strands. So nothing really tricky about it. And if you want Arnold to render this properly, well, let me see. Let's create a light, a sky dome light. And I don't want to see it in the scene because now I don't see the strands anymore properly. So I deactivate deactivate the lights here. I don't re really deactivate the lights. They're still shining, but um, I don't want to see them in the in the viewport here. I want to see my uh, strands. And now I render this scene. It takes a while to run up because it needs to think about frame 62 because it's a dynamic system, although it doesn't behave dynamically right now. And it looks like there's nothing in there. So let us go back to the Skydome light here in the outliner and click on AI Skydome light shape. And down here we find the camera visibility and we reduce this. So this is what we have. And we actually don't see any strands here. In some cases, I've seen <laughs> strands depending on the scenery. I don't really know why that is. Uh, and uh, but it doesn't really matter because we want more control anyway. That's why we go back to our flow graph, as it's called, and we disconnect this. And then, of course, we don't have strands visible in the scene anymore. Now, free space here, and we type tab, and now we want Arnold. And Arnold has many options and an interesting one for us is set Arnold strands settings. This is just wonderful because it wants strands. You see, we make that connection and the out strands go into, for example, this one here. But it doesn't help us very much. We can actually try it. So we see the strands again when we render the scene. It shows us the strands now, but we want even more control. We need an AI standard uh, surface shader here in order to really control the colors, because now it's using the Lambert shader here for rendering, but at least it does do the rendering now. Uh, well, let's type in material, because we need material now, assign material. Let's have a look what it wants. It wants geometry and it wants a surface material. And now comes uh, a part which is a little bit, uh, well, we're leaving this window just for a second and open the hypergraph because we need to create a new material. 
We could do this in the viewport as well, but let's use a hypergraph. And um, here we have lots of shaders because we have a geometry uh, a character with uh, texture, but we don't uh, want the that texture for our strands. It's the texture of the, of the character. So we go to create and down here we see the Arnold standard surface shader. It's the shader we're very much used to. And uh, what we do now is we middle mouse drag the shader into this window. Now we can actually close the hypershade. The AI standard surface shader wants to feed its material reference, as it's called, into the surface material. If you want a volume material, you feed it in here, but it's both blue. So that light blue is just fine. It doesn't want to feed into the ge geometry because the geometry are the strands. So feed it in here. Now we delete this connection because our out, out strands go into the geometry of the assigned material now. That basically means we have a character. We create strands along the normals of that character. Then we feed it into the Arnold strands settings. And the Arnold strand settings feed it into the assigned material because we want to assign that material from Arnold and we feed the out geometry in here. I think you cannot connect this, just use this open port and it will have out geometry here. And the connection between the standard surface shader and this assigned material is a very classic one here for the Biforce graph. Now we can render it again and actually I use viewport rendering now. I know this looks funky because we have a mixture of the viewport which is uh, the grid for example, deactivate the grid and uh, I don't want to see the strands really, the representation of the strand, but uh, here you see that Arnold is actually rendering it. When we right mouse click here we get uh, the material attributes and that's the Lambert shader. That's the standard Lambert shader. That's actually not the shader we see here from the bigger parts, the bigger strands. Uh, that's the shading method for the for the thin ones in the viewport. Sounds very complex I know. Uh, but we need to go to the AI standard surface shader which we just created. And uh, one method you might think is to double click it here and um, find it here in the attribute editor but you don't. So um, it's a little bit hard to find. You need to go back here and here you have your standard surface shader in the hypershade. You can close that window now because now it appears here and you can uh, use one of the presets for example and even if you don't see that properly we can uh, uh, use jade for example and we replace it. So uh, this is not really interesting, but um, <laughs> this can be done. Here now you can change the type of shading. For example, go to a car paint. And this was not possible before. You needed that node in the Bifrost graph about the material assignment. Well, uh, you know, you can animate this. As I said, no dynamic simulation here, although the strands are made for dynamic simulation, but that's uh, a different topic and uh, if you really want to get into it I just recommend you to check the channel YouTube channel of uh, the Maya guy who does excellent work uh, with Bifrost Graph. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.